Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and I am a dental hygienist. Let's talk about teeth and marijuana. Marijuana, cannabis, weed, pot, whatever you call it, whether it's used for medicinal or recreational use, it is legal in a bunch of states. About 37 states right now for medicinal use specifically. So now that things are legal, that is great, but whenever we are associating something with the health of our teeth, we always weigh both the benefits and risks. Especially with any type of substance or drug, I do have a video all about medications and teeth, regular traditional pills, which I will link in the bottom bar below if you'd like to learn more. But for the purpose of this video, Let's talk about weed. Those who use marijuana use it for a reason, right? It can totally benefit your body, especially if you need comfort from cancer treatments, MS, chronic pain, and a host of other conditions and situations. And those cases are when the risk versus benefit scenario really comes into play. Do the benefits that you're getting for your body outweigh the risks of what you may be doing to your teeth? What can marijuana do to your teeth? It can cause tooth staining, specifically a green or black line stain near the gum line. It can increase your risk of gum disease. The studies are clear that it raises your risk of gum disease, but they are still unclear on whether it's from the smoke or from the marijuana itself. It might honestly be a combination of both, but right now we don't know exactly which one it is, and one day this video will age itself once we do know. But the point is, right now we know that smoking marijuana increases gum disease. Marijuana can also raise your chances of tooth decay, cavities. This is because of marijuana's biggest oral side effect, dry mouth. An interesting study I read about dry mouth and marijuana was that whether you smoke it or ingest it, like with edibles, both put you at a risk of dry mouth. So it's not necessarily the smoking that causes dry mouth, it might be the weed itself. Again, it's limited research, but it's something to think about if you struggle with dry mouth. If your plan was to stop smoking and start taking edibles instead, it will not help relieve your dry mouth. Another reason marijuana can cause tooth decay and cavities, in addition to dry mouth, is from the side effect of hunger. The more hungry you are, the more likely you are to snack on carbohydrates hydrates and soda and other cavity causing foods. I will link my best foods for your teeth video and my worst foods for your teeth video in the bottom bar below so if you are someone who tends to snack a lot you'll know which foods to have on hand and which foods to avoid. And lastly oral cancer. A definite association is not extremely clear yet however there are reports that marijuana smoke does have cancer producing ingredients perhaps even more than tobacco smoke. So no matter what we end up finding out with more studies the take-home message of this point is to always tell your dental provider if you smoke any anything, whether it's tobacco or marijuana, because then they can thoroughly check your mouth for oral cancer and continue to provide you with routine oral cancer exams. Oral cancer exams should be done on all dental patients, regardless of your smoking status, but it's still truly a good idea to tell us if you smoke because it also helps us determine the status of your gum tissues when we're checking for gum disease. So all oral cancer aside, your gums tend to not bleed as much when you're a smoker, which can make your gum assessment incorrect. So it's super important we know whether or not you smoke to properly diagnose periodontal gum disease, as well as to continue providing oral cancer exams. And before we go, let's talk about four things you can do at home to improve the health of your teeth and gums if you use marijuana in any form. We already mentioned snacking and diet, so that's my number one thing here. Really focus on what you're eating when you're using marijuana. Again, I'll link my teeth and food videos in the bottom or below to help with healthy snacking. Swishing with bicarbonate rinses. I'll of course link some product suggestions in the bottom or below. Oftentimes, marijuana can leave a sticky film on your teeth. So the idea of a bicarbonate rinse is that it neutralizes this film and also helps with staining. It's even better if you could follow up with brushing your teeth to get rid of any residual film left on your teeth as well gum stimulators and or water flossers. Anything that can stimulate your gum tissue and help reduce the effects of gum disease is recommended. Even if you aren't ready to use an additional tool like a water flosser or a gum stimulator, maybe you can just change up your toothbrush. If you're using a regular toothbrush, start by switching to an electric. The additional vibrations and or spinning motions can really help reduce the amount of plaque on your teeth as well as stimulate your gum tissue. And number four, ask your dentist for a prescription fluoride toothpaste to use at home or even request or ask if they think you would benefit from a fluoride varnish treatment in office. Fluoride helps remineralize tooth enamel, so when you are at a higher risk for tooth decay due to smoking, the extra fluoride can help strengthen your enamel and reduce your chance of cavities. And one more thing, another reason it's super important to tell your dental office that you smoke is because using marijuana actually increases your heart rate, which is especially important if you are getting numb during your dental appointment, if they are numbing up your tooth. Oftentimes we will use local anesthetics containing epinephrine 
epinephrine. Epinephrine also increases your heart rate. So when you have two things increasing your heart rate, both the marijuana and the epinephrine, we don't want that because that decreases the oxygen saturation in your blood. So you really have to either not use marijuana on the day of your dental appointment where you're going to be numb and or be sure to tell your dental provider that you smoked beforehand so that they are aware to take your blood pressure before administering local anesthetic. They may even choose to use an anesthetic without epinephrine if possible. We don't want any heart issues at the dentist, so please tell us if you smoked beforehand, especially if you plan to get numb during your appointment. In all, although we know there can be some harmful side effects to our dental health from marijuana, we do know that the benefits of using marijuana can outweigh the risks in some cases. Not all, right, but some. And in those cases, if you are someone that uses marijuana, be sure to take the proper precautions for your dental health at home, including all the things we talked about earlier, healthy snacks, bicarbonate rinses, gum stimulation, considering switching to an electric toothbrush and adding a fluoride supplement. I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe and turn on your notifications if it did. If you want more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com or hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.